let's take a look then at the terms of the new Windsor framework. There will be a twin lane system for customs. The green lane will allow trusted traders to send goods from Great Britain into Northern Ireland without checks. Meanwhile, goods destined for Ireland and the EU's single market will go through the red lane. VAT rates and state aid policy will be set by Westminster rather than by Brussels. And the Prime Minister also announced what he called the Stormont Break, allowing the Northern Ireland Assembly to prevent EU laws applying. But the European Commission says the European Court of Justice will retain the final say on single market issues, a significant sticking point for Tory Eurosceptics and the DUP. Well, our deputy political editor, Sam Coates, has been poring over the 27 pages of the agreement. Let's hear now from his assessment, Sam. 27 pages, 13,000 words. Now, it's a deal that Boris Johnson, Liz Truss or even Theresa May could not strike. So what's in it? Well, what is clear is that this negotiation is a big deal. The Windsor framework work fundamentally amends the texts and provisions of the original protocol, something Brussels always said they would never do. And it takes steps to address some of the real tensions that the original deal was causing. Right now, businesses face a stack of paperwork to get their goods from Britain to Northern Ireland. This deal does change that. In the future, if you're sending British manufactured items to Northern Ireland, you're going to be using the green lane so that goods being sold in Northern Ireland will be freed of unnecessary paperwork. Only goods going on to the EU will need processes and requirements. Now, that's code for forms and checks. Then, Rishi Sunak has solved one of the key anomalies of Brexit, and that's that Brussels, not Westminster, had powers over some tax rates in Northern Ireland, much to his irritation when he was Chancellor. Now, in future, Northern Ireland will benefit from the same VAT and alcohol taxes as apply in the rest of the United Kingdom, and the deal amends the legal text of the treaty to do so. Now, here is the crucial question that DUP unionists and Brexiteer Conservatives have been worrying about. How to stop rules made in Brussels applying to goods in Northern Ireland when they don't have to apply in the rest of the United Kingdom? Enter the new Stormont Break. It's a new tool which the Prime Minister says has the power to veto the application of new Brussels rules and the EU's legal enforcement to Northern Ireland permanently. Now, there are some exceptions. Some areas are exempt from it and it can't be used on trivial issues. But the deal says any veto would be permanent and can only be undone if the UK and the EU agree jointly. So, where next? Tory MPs are mulling their response. Lots of eyes on Boris Johnson. The document says that Rishi Sunak is going to scrap his predecessor says alternate plan, a new law to unilaterally rip up the deal without consulting Brussels. Johnson told Sky News last week it was the best way forward. But Rishi Sunak believes doing deals is the better way forward. He now hopes a stronger relationship with the EU could even mean an agreement with France to sort out boats crossing the Channel. He needs to show his Brexit deal has lots of possible advantages.